know, I have a lot of banes in my existence these days. Uh, the new one as of this year is trying to enjoy anything about Godzilla. Well, a whole very obnoxious cluster of assholes who've watched exactly one Godzilla movie recently tries to tell me in very confident tones that this one Godzilla thing they just watched is the only way it was ever meant to be done or exist, especially when I loved that one too, probably my favorite thing I saw last year, and still have to listen to smug idiots be wrong about it. Uh, the chief manifestation of this being a mimetically formed hive mind opinion among wannabe film intelligentsia that the real Godzilla from Japan, by which they mean the new one they just saw, the one they probably didn't see but they'll lie about seeing now, and the one they should have already seen because it's 70 years old but they probably watched after the new one, is good because it's serious, thoughtful, and about things, whereas the American MonsterVerse Godzilla is bad because it's somewhat unserious, he teams up with King Kong, and not about anything. Or at least not about anything in a subtle way, because someone at some point decided symbolism is only good when it's subtle, and therefore you need to pretend that giant radiation dinosaur equals atomic bomb bad qualifies as subtlety somehow. Now to be clear, this is not me even a little bit suggesting that Godzilla x Kong, the new empire, intended and executed as a monster fights first, everything else second, blockbuster romp in line with these 60s and 70s Godzilla features, though here much decidedly a King Kong movie where Godzilla plays a substantive but still secondary supporting role is anywhere near as artistically ambitious or grand an undertaking as Godzilla Minus One, only that they are both in fact on the thoughtful, not particularly subtle end of the monster movie storytelling spectrum, just one with different audiences in mind. So whereas Minus was more of an adult-focused film aiming to send its audience home with a haunting message about grief, overcoming survivor's guilt, post-war resilience, and living with the weight of history, and our own decisions, New Empire is a giant monkey wrestling movie for seven-year-olds aiming to send its audience home with a positive message that bullying is bad, adoptive parents are heroes, and the importance of good dental hygiene. And I'm not kidding about that last one. And also, our new bad guy this time is Scar King, an evil red ape counterpart to Kong, who keeps other giant gorillas as his slaves, rules by bullying and mocking others for their perceived otherness or fallibilities, and just in case you're not getting it, keeps as his secret weapon, a super powerful female monster that he's imprisoned, abuses, and controls with his special whip weapon, because there is no subtlety when your characters are 300 feet tall. In any case, for our story proper, Kong inadvertently discovers Scar King's domain while exploring Hollow Earth, which in turn triggers Godzilla to start up a jaunt around the world to gobble up more powers from nuclear plants and other monsters, basically on the assumption that this bullshit is going to come topside again and be his problem eventually. A couple all is lost moments, the usual kind of tedious but by now familiar check-ins with Monarch, a discovery of an underground human civilization of Deus Ex Machina worshippers, a whole page of Diddy Kong jokes that would have been really funny a week ago, I think. Kong's new power punch punchy glove, Godzilla's spiffy new Super Saiyan Rosé look, and a very clearly shoehorned in for star power, additional famous monster cameo later, and it's time for a monster battle that takes up most of Act 3, and look, I'm joking around here, but I kid because I love. Yeah, this pretty much rules, it's very inventive, a lot of smashing, well performed, you absolutely get your money's worth out of your monkey's worth. Describing the last act of this would really not convey it other than to give away the cool parts, and say the big monsters throw each other around, punch the shit out of each other, and the physical character character work is really top tier at this point. They know what they're doing and it works. You know how the usual generic good to bad ratios in these things has been that you can almost always say the best parts are when the monsters are fighting and the least good parts are when the people are talking? This time the people talking is, you know, whatever, it's fine, Brian Tyree Henry is good, but the actual best parts are when the monsters are not fighting, but also I guess not talking, but making monster noises and monkey sounds at each other, communicating by body language. Like a lot of this movie is just big monsters squaring up on each other and pointing, posing, having to sell the audience, we're doing this now, this is happening without using words. You know, Godzilla and Kong doing the friends who aren't friends thing where they have to beat up each other until it's respectful nod time, like, so we're gonna fight this red guy? Yeah, I guess we're gonna go fight the red guy now. It's good stuff, it's not necessarily a lot to it, but what's here really works. For my part, I wish there was more Godzilla in the mix this time, but at this point the numbers haven't lied for the MonsterVerse franchise. It feels like the big takeaway has been that we've been underestimating estimating how much people wanted King Kong as a franchise star all these years and just assuming Godzilla was the only one who could carry an ensemble series. No, turns out the gorilla is the clear top of this on the western side as much as Godzilla is in the east, which feels almost stupidly obvious in hindsight. You know, this feels like it's a 7, but let's say 8 because the number scale is dumb anyway and I had a good time. Yeah, go see it.